Welcome to Cyber Studies. If this is your first time here, my name is Giovanni. So today is episode five of our PowerShell playlist. Uh, every five episodes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a script and break it down. We're gonna reverse engineer this bad boy. Uh, kind of see how things work, everything we've learned up until that point. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so as mentioned in uh, the intro there, um, this is our fifth video in the series. So if you've been watching from the beginning, thank you very much. <laughs> um, so a couple videos back, we talked about the get process commandlet. Um, and while that is very useful, um, we're not gonna use that today. And I'll show you why. So we are trying to figure out in our little uh, made up scenario here that we have a process and we are trying to figure out um, what caused that process to launch, right? So in this particular scenario, we're, like I mentioned, we're gonna use something a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna use the CIM instance. Um, if you've been using PowerShell, you may have heard of WMI, uh, as you may know, <laughs> I might get some flack for this. Um, WMI is being deprecated. Uh, I believe ever since PowerShell like three, uh, they're, they're leaning more towards this PS, um, you know, remote services, uh, better security practices, right? So I'm not here to argue which one's better or worse. I mean, they're so similar, but um, we're going to use CIM because you know, it's going to stay here for a while. Um, and WMI is going to be deprecated. <laughs> so anyways, so we're going to do get... Uh, uh, Ooh. instances now again this is going to be really similar to your get processes but what's cool about these is they use something called classes and if you get really into the weeds if you're more getting into like cim servers uh doing the classes it, it gets really complicated really fast but um for the sake of this video we'll keep it nice and short uh i think it's win oh i hit tab complete Win32 um, process, okay. And so this is gonna spit out everything, right? And, and very similar to our get processes. Um, we could sort this out, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do that. And we are going to filter name, yeah. I know what we're looking for. So right here, this is the one that we're looking for. And this is our Razor Synapsis Servers Prophesis. Um, so basically this is the, the target. <laughs> now um, I had mentioned before, we're gonna dissect a script. Now, this is a very simple script. This is episode five of many. <laughs> so, so don't put my head on a pike here. Um, but something we haven't talked about yet and utilizing is the Windows PowerShell ISE. This is your integrated scripting environment. Um, there are different ways of using this. There's the uh, the right way right here, and then the wrong way. <laughs> Joking aside, it's all about preference and how you want to view things. Uh, but what's really cool about this is uh, Microsoft did a really good job of making a uh, like an IDE or a you know a development environment uh, for your scripting, and uh, it allows you to utilize some things, um, kind of some better uh, tab completing, auto completing. It's, it's all integrated right here. It's really nice and really cool. Um, I personally only use this when I'm scripting. A lot of folks will use this on the daily because it helps with their um, auto complete, right? So what we have right here in our little demo uh, put together earlier today, we're gonna select this and then we're gonna hit F8. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask us, what is the name of the process that we're looking for? And as I mentioned in our little scenario earlier, we're gonna take this process and we're gonna see what launched it. Um, this is commonly known as like pid hopping. But what's gonna happen is we're gonna say, let me pull that real quick. So I saved it off to the side. And we're gonna throw it in here. Now, what that's gonna do is uh, we have here on the side is this. This is our process ID, 
right? And think of this kind of as like a uh, like an address, um, a a way of, of kind of mapping things out. Now this is whenever you turn off your computer and turn it back on, uh, a new instance occurs, this number will change. Um, but this is how we kind of find things in our session, right? So we're gonna go through here, we have this, we're gonna hit fire, and some sort of number just popped up. Now, we know, due to the scenario I said earlier, that this is the actual parent process. Now we can go through and run a little verification. I just did a little copy paste just for, you know, quick quickness here. <laughs> And this will show us the actual parent process. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> now, this could be used in a, a bunch of different ways. There's many ways to skin a cat, tons of different ways you can pit hop. Um, for the sake of this demo and to explain what the script is, this is how we're doing it. So what we did is we did a clear function right off the back. This is common practice I like to do because if you're going through and you're running in your um, your terminal here in your console, um, it can get cluttered really quick. So we threw a little clear. You can do like a clear host if you wanted to. It's the same thing. It, it does the exact same stuff. Now we have declared a variable by name. Name is going to say whatever the um, user inputs on the screen. This will read off of the host. Um, and it will off the console and it will take it and put it into our variable as a value. So it's going to say, here's the prompt right here. Oop. There's the prompt saying, Hey, what are you going to ask the user? You're going to say name of whatever you're basically typing in a string. It doesn't really mean anything. You can put a space in there and it'll still work. <laughs> so we are saying, Hey, whatever the, the user puts in, it will now be stored as variable name. Now I've created another variable here, and this is uh, parent PID, and we're utilizing that sim instance, as I mentioned before the classes, we're utilizing the win32, and we are going to filter off of the name. And we basically said, hey, the name from our first variable that we pulled, and we're going to make the portion that we're filtering off of equal to that, right? And then that is going to equal or go down here into our last variable, which is output. Output is saying, hey, we're going to turn this variable, which is this guy right up here. We are going off of the uh, stored properties because we now turned it into an object. Um, and we said that, hey, anything that's in its placeholders, we have uh, like the arrays, hash tables, the last video. Um, everything starts with zero. So the first item stored into this thing, we're only storing one value, uh, it's going to be zero. <laughs> um, so we're going to say right here. Yeah. So we have the parent process IDs, parent process ID property off of the first value right here, because again, zero is one. Um, that is now going to be stored all as output. You kind of see how this is starting to add up and compound, right? Lastly, we're going to do write host a little bit different than read host, read host. You're taking things from the user. You're reading it off of the host. Now we're going to output it to the host or the console. So we're saying, Hey, we're going to write to the host, the output variable, which is right here built off of this guy, which is built off these guys. It starts compounding. <laughs> and then for fun, I threw a background color of white and a foreground color of black, just to spice it up a little bit. <laughs> so honestly, that was it. And you see how fast we were able to kind of move and groove through that. Um, you can do a lot of different stuff, anything from taking a, uh, like a PS drive and mapping out all your hard drives on your machine and then adding those all up and saying, Hey, this is the free space available. Um, scripting gets really cool, especially in like admin work. Um, if you're just searching through some things, it is very beneficial. Um, to output it to a different format. You can do a lot of stuff of scripts. That's why you're here, right? PowerShell scripting. <laughs> so that's a quick wrap up um, on this one. And 
as we go down, you know, these episodes, things are going to get a little bit more complicated. We're going to start getting a little more lengthy scripts. This is what all of five lines of code, and we're able to take a, uh, a list of these processes and find its parent process. <laughs> so without further ado, thank you so much for watching this week's video. Um, I believe next week I'm going to try something a little bit different. Uh, we've been doing some instructional videos, and so I'm going to start doing some more one-off, um, like specific questions, how to do certain things, that kind of vibe. So if you like that kind of content or you want to see something in particular, let me know down in the comments. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and have a good one. Thank you.